In this video, we're going to look at different background types in CAS XPS and how to define these background types. And we'll make use of a Zirconium 3P doublet. The aim of using a, a 3P doublet is that we ought to have a pair of peaks from a doublet that should be in a well-defined ratio of 2 to 1. We'll begin by creating a background and we'll isolate the individual peaks within the doublet using the background. And we'll start off with a Shirley background. So if I type in S and press return, then the background type changes to Shirley. And this will then become the default background type. So when I create the next background, then it too will be a Shirley background. So I've got two peaks. I've got one representing the three halves and I've got one representing the one half peak in this doublet and the ratio that we ought to get for these peaks should be two to one so we'd expect the area as a percentage to be 66.66 to 33.33 so we can see that if we use this Shirley background we're not getting the expected ratio for this doublet pair now we could try some other backgrounds so for example we could have a linear background and I'll do that for both of these and once again we don't get the expected ratio even for a linear background we're getting a similar answer but nevertheless it's not the ratio that we'd expect so what we need to do is think about this a little bit more to work out why we have the a ratio that doesn't match the physics of this photo emission process. It's worth looking at why a ratio should exist between these two doublet peaks and why these doublet peaks exist for a P orbital. So we can look at an example here of the photo emission process where we don't have a p orbital but we have an s orbital and for an s orbital you only get a single peak and that's because you you are exciting two equivalent 1s electrons so the photo emission process has a well-defined initial state and a well-defined final state that has no obvious difference and hence you get a single peak for a doublet peak, where we have p orbitals, we have six electrons, but they come in two sets of equivalent electrons. We've got four in the three halves state and two in the one half state. And if an electron is excited from these three halves, then there are four possible ways that you can create a an excited state with this electron configuration. And for the one half you have two possible ways of creating an excited state with this equivalent set of electrons and so the ratio of these peaks depends on these initial and final states so we have four here to two so we get a two to one ratio for these peaks and the energy difference between these peaks is determined by the final state energy difference so we get a, a gap here that corresponds to the difference in the energy of these two final states. Given that there's some theoretical basis to suggest that for a, a p orbital we should have a 2 to 1 ratio for doublet peaks, then it requires some explanation as to why we're not actually achieving this using these backgrounds. So if we look at the a zirconium 3D and overlay these two together, we've got two different photo emission lines the 3D has produced a doublet also, but they're very close together and they're narrow peaks. However, you can see, because of the narrowness of these peaks, that there are, is significant structure in the background, and we also see a similar structure here. So the question is, is it possible there's a peak beneath the zirconium 3P one half? And if I use the spectrum processing dialog window and select the calibration property page this enables a display option that when I hold a control key down I can just slide an image of the 3D and move it and then actually apply the adjustment that I just made using that that image of the 3D so you can see that the 3D now aligns with this 3P 
three halves peak and if this were a single peak you could see that it might generate a structure that looks something like this that is beneath this peak for the zirconium 3p one half and it's this extra signal that is being generated by this three halves peak that sits beneath the one half peak that could be an explanation of why the ratio isn't the expected ratio. We can analyze this doublet pair in a bit more detail if we use a peak model. And I'm going to prepare a peak model that is based on a background which is going to be a Tugar type background. So let me first of all adjust my region and then I'm going to change the background type and I can do that either by clicking here once I've selected a, a region or I can hold the control key down before the background type is an edit field and click with my left mouse button and that reveals a menu of different background types and I'm going to select this one here this is a U3 Tugar background now the cross-section fields for a U3 Tugar background include a value that is calculated to ensure that the background meets the data here it also has three parameters that determine the shape of the background and if I just use minus 750 here this is the equivalent of using a U2 Tugar background because I've got this I've got this third parameter set to zero and simply using one value and a negative value here reduces the U3 Tugar background to the same as the U2 Tugar background however the additional parameter that I've changed is this last one which is an offset so if I set that one to zero so there's no offset you can see that the background is much smoother so this is simulating a cutoff which produces a more Shirley like background and also logically can be thought of as allowing for a band gap where loss events cannot occur we try to produce a background that simulates this kind of behavior now this is just an approximation and it's not really going to be that precise but it, it has some sort of logic behind it and one of the reasons that this is quite useful is that when I introduce a synthetic component and I set the component to be a mostly Lorentzian type component and I say fit then after I've adjusted the background offset and I'll probably need to do the same at this end as well then I get a pretty good fit to this side of the of the data using a Lorentzian line shape so let me copy that paste and I'm going to move that one here and I'm going to paste again and this time I'm going to move the pasted peak to this loss structure here and I say fit and I end up with a peak model that involves three peaks now the theory is that this peak here is mostly due to loss events that have occurred because of the zirconium one half peak here and that somewhere beneath this zirconium one half peak there is a corresponding peak that is due to the zirconium three halves peak so if I copy this one and paste and then again I'm going to move that using the mouse over here and say fit you can see that there is some kind of peak here that the optimization has found but we would probably expect this to be larger than this structure here so what I'm now going to do is introduce a constraint and that is to say I want to introduce the known relationship between P orbitals that is that one should be twice the size of the other and say fit and now we start to see a shape that is not dissimilar from what we see here and we should also bear in mind that this one actually must have a contribution from not just this peak here but the secondary one from this 
three halves peak so this is actually more than one peak here but just to understand how well this is fitting and and seeing that I've introduced a relationship that is consistent with the p orbitals and it has produced a shape in about the right place the shape that has resulted means that the the doublet peak does appear to need an extra structure beneath the one half peak in order to properly model the intensity that would be from the zero loss events associated with the zirconium 3p